Okay, welcome to chess lesson number six from Snow's Chess Academy. What we're going to take on today is checkmate with just a few pieces on the board, and that's why we call them the basic mates, because there aren't many pieces. Today we're going to start out with the most elementary of elementary checkmates, the king and two rooks against the king. Now I want you to pretend that these two rooks are your feet, and I want you to pretend that these ranks are some stairs that they are going to climb. And you'll find this is a very easy checkmate to master. The one thing you must be careful about is that there is one pathway upon which the rooks are weak, and that is the diagonals. And that is what the king will use to try to attack and thwart the mate attempts by the rooks. The king will attempt to attack the rooks on the diagonal, and you must be careful to make sure you don't lose a rook. Now, if you were to lose one rook, you could still checkmate with a king and a rook, and we're gonna cover that in the next lesson. But for this lesson, we're simply going to look at the climbing of the stairs to checkmate with two rooks. Once you know how to do this, uh, you should be able to land a fair number of checkmates should you be this far ahead in the game. And if you had a king, queen, and rook, it'd be even a little bit easier. Now, in this position, the black king has plenty of room. It can move to all eight of these squares. And our first job is to take away some of these squares. What we're going to do is with the two rooks, we're going to climb the stairs, climb the stairs and bring about checkmate. We may climb the stairs with our feet far apart, or we may climb them with our feet close together, but we will not climb them with one foot in front of the other, that they would lose their balance just as you would were you to try to climb the stairs with both of your feet right in front of the other like that. So to start with our first move is going to be to take away the squares closest to both rooks that the king can move to. So we're gonna move our rook out to a4. We have just taken away half of the entire board from the black king. We have begun to take away squares from the black king. Now, we're gonna to try to make the best moves for both sides. If you're defending this position, what you wanna to try to do is keep the king in the center. It will be much harder for white to checkmate the black king should the king be in the center. Now for the side with the extra rooks, you really do not need to use your king at all. We're going to leave the king alone. Uh, he, he, uh, would, it would take too long to use him in this particular position to bring about checkmate. Now the king will try to stay in the center for the time being, but we'll soon realize that that, that does not work. So we have your, your, your top foot up here on the fourth stair. We're gonna now bring your bottom foot up to the fifth stair, okay? Climbing the stairs here. Notice now we have now taken control of both the fourth rank and the fifth rank. Now the black king realizes that if he just stays in the center, the two rooks will simply force him back along the D and the E file and bring about an easy checkmate. So we're going to try something a little bit different here. We're going to try to use the king's power on the diagonal to chase the rooks. So the king goes back on the diagonal. Notice from uh, D4, he could not stay on the fourth rank. He could not go to the fifth rank. He came backwards, attacking, uh, trying to attack the rook that is closest to him. Now this does not thwart, thwart uh, white for the time being. He simply brings his lower foot from the fourth stair up to the sixth stair, in this case, the sixth rank. And notice once again, we've now taken away not only the fifth rank, but the sixth rank. All right, the king will now use its power to attack on the diagonal by moving to b7 and it threatens the rook. Now, this is where a lot of players will go wrong. Uh, they will run the rook backwards, giving the king the sixth rank to move to. No, that would be a mistake. Uh, or they may bring the other rook over to defend the rook. That would be a mistake as well. Worst case would be they'd use the other rook to check the king and lose a rook. Now, what we're simply going to do is slide our upper foot to the other side of the stair. Notice now the black king is way too far away to stop the rooks from their continued climb up the stairs to bring about this rather simple checkmate. Now another tactic that white could have used that's going to take a bit longer would to climb, be to climb half a step, have the king move away and climb the stairs that way. But I think we all know that when you, when you climb the stairs with one foot up above each stair, you climb the stairs a whole lot faster than when you put your two feet just together climbing just one stair at a time. So the king can make a move towards the rooks but it is truly too far away. We bring our bottom foot, bottom rook, up to the next step, giving check. Now we have forced the king to the back rank. The king has no alternative. Look at the power of the two rooks working together as a team. 
Good teamwork, absolutely essential to win in this position. The king must now move to the back rank. It really didn't matter whether he moved to d8, c8, or b8. Our bottom foot, bottom rook is going to take one step above and bring about checkmate on g8. All right, now let's take a look at doing it in another direction. And one of our problems in chess is we have a geometric bias. We sometimes are so used to moving things forward, we don't realize that sometimes we can be just as effective moving them sideways. So what we're going to do now is we're going to chase the king to this side of the board. Okay? And what we're going to do first is take away squares, just as we did before. Notice now we've cut off these three files from the black king. The black king this time will now head towards the other rook, which as a black can anticipate wants to work its way this way as well. And it does so on the next move, coming to d8. Notice now the process involves chasing the king in this direction. All right, the king comes over and attacks the rook. All right, the rook is weak on the diagonal, but we need to find a good square to move the rook to. The rook does not want to go backwards or it will give the king the d file to move to. This rook is going to swing far away down to d2, and the black king will simply come forward to try to get towards the rooks. All right, I'm teaching you the simplest way to do this checkmate, not necessarily the fastest. The white rook will now come up to c3, because its own king was in the way, and the rook will now prepare to move over to e3, and there's really nothing that black can do to stop that. The king comes forward to e5, and the white rook moves over to e3 with check. Notice now the power of the two rooks controlling two lines of attack at the same time. The king comes over to f4, attacking the rook on the diagonal, as he should, and the white rook simply moves to the other side of the stair here, or the file in this case. The black king knows that this red rook here wants to come over to f2 to try to push him to the rim, and comes here stopping that process. The white rook will simply run down next to his fellow rook, and now you can see the two rooks are poised to continue climbing the stairs towards the rim. King comes forward, rook over, gives check, and you can see the denouement is just about at hand, but not without one final last gasp from black. As the rooks continue to drive him over, the king is able to stop rook to h7 with checkmate. Now we're going to see an example of where it actually makes sense to climb just half a step. We're going to move this rook to g7, forcing the king to move to h5. This is what we call zugzwang. This means it would be better if it was not black's move, but it is, and he must move to h5. And now from here, you can move either rook to h8 with checkmate or rook to h7 with checkmate. So. All you need to do really here is remember the concept of climbing the stairs, keeping the rooks away from the king on the diagonal, driving the king to one edge of the board, using the climbing the stairs method to bring about checkmate. Thanks so much for watching.